Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I am an independent, sorry, I'm just pushing some buttons here. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from the U.S. in Andover, Minnesota, and I'm here to bring you a live paper crafting class. Yay! Sorry, always technical things. <laughs> um, all right, so I am going to show you a very uh, pretty card today. Um, it is not a fun fold. Um, but it involves a technique called watercoloring, and this is this has been around forever. We're going to use our water-based um, inks. They're called classic inks, and we're going to use water um, water painters. They're like um, paint brushes, but they have water inside of them. Um, and then we're going to be watercoloring on something unique. So a big welcome to all of you. If this is your first time, please like and subscribe and. You know, give me the thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. Um, share, um, even if this isn't your first time, I, I appreciate all of that. Uh, I'm a little distracted because we've had a lot going on at our house. Uh, we, we are in the midst of a remodel and um, cabinetry stuff came in on Monday. And so the contractor and his crew came and installed um, the last of the cabinetry. And then just um, an hour and a half ago, um, someone from Home Depot came and measured for the countertops and it's just all a whirlwind right now. I'm living on four hours of sleep because I'm just like giddy about the whole thing and I couldn't, I woke up and then I couldn't get back to sleep. <laughs> so if I make mistakes today, you'll know why. Um, let me show you the cards that we're going to do here. We're actually going to make this one and then this is the other version that you can do with it if you just use um, slightly different pieces from the bundle. We're going to be using the Splendid Thoughts bundle. It is from the Jan uh, July through December mini catalog and um, it includes the stamp set and the dies. And so you can see the stamp set here and here and then the dies are obviously like there's a frame kind of die and then detailed dies. So, um, but do you, do you notice a little bit of sparkle on here? <laughs> We're going to watercolor on glimmer paper. It's so cool, you guys. Okay, so let us play around first. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to um, put up the supply list so that you can see that. And a big welcome, oh my gosh, I'm just getting so excited here. A big welcome to Trisha Josephs and Lisa Marshall. They are joining us. Um, oh, my computer, maybe that's what's going on. Hang on a minute, I have to connect again. I'm like, something's odd here. <laughs> Hopefully it'll connect. Um, but yes, uh, Trisha Josephs is mo my moderator on YouTube and she is um, chiming in, answering questions, um, help helping to guide you all in the right direction on YouTube. And then we have Lisa Marshall who is over on Facebook. So um, yes, thank you gals for doing all of that. Here, my computer's up. You know, we're having slow internet today too. So that's always fun. Um, okay, now we can preview. There we go. So take a glance at this. This is a PDF sheet that you'll be able to print off from my blog post that's going to that's going to connect to this video in about an hour at 12.15 p.m. Central Time. So, you know, adjust that to wherever you're at. But um, at 12.15 p.m. Central Time, you'll be able to click on the link uh, for the blog post connected to this video. Once you're there, you're going to see photographs of the cards. You're going to be able to see a visual supply list. You're going to be able to download um, this PDF. Uh, also, the measurements will be just, you know, printed right there in the blog post and all of that stuff. So um, feel free to take a screenshot if you want to, but you don't need to. I'm going to be keeping this up on my computer so that I can glance over the me at the um, measurements as we go. But um, Yes, so let's go back to the desktop now. And you can tell I'm sitting down again. I'm, I'm still dealing with that foot issue. Oh, well. <laughs> so, so I feel like I'm like looking way up in the sky right now at you, but that's okay. Um, hopefully, you'll be, if you are hearing impaired or deaf, you'll be able to still read my lips. I know there's a slight angle difference on my face right now, but um, let me know. So... We've got glimmer paper in front of us. This is the glimmer paper from the glimmer specialty paper in the mini catalog. The glimmer specialty paper comes in the um, van vanilla color, the gold, and then I believe this is evening evergreen. Let's take a peek at that. I want to make sure I'm telling you right. 
Um, did you know in the back of the mini catalog, you have the accessories and the punches and the stamps and bundles and all of that, like at a glance, it's like a little fun view at a glance. So if we go to the specialty paper, it's on page 17. Let's take a quick peek at that. Page 17. Uh, it is. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. It's on page 31. There we go, Rachel. Yes, I was looking at the wrong place. So on page 31, yes, I was correct. Evening Evergreen, Very Vanilla, and Gold. Um, I also have the book open to our Splendid Day Suite because this is where the Splendid Thoughts bundle comes from. You can get just the bundle, which is a stamp set and die combo. Um, when you buy them together, you save 10%. In the US, it's $51.25. And then when you buy them separately, it's the full price with 23 and then 34. If you want to, you can get the whole suite. And that includes these fun little embellishments here, the pretty ribbon, and the beautiful paper. Um, and I've shared this uh, suite with you before. So if you're interested in that, you can just use one order number, order the whole thing. You save that 10% within the bundle as well. Okay, now we also have another glimmer paper. And that one is called the, oops, I've got little parts and pieces flying everywhere. That one is called the red and, or real red and white glimmer paper. And it's six by six size. I did not play around with this. But I'm sure that the watercoloring technique would probably work on the white glimmer paper as well. Um, so have, you know, play around with it. Try different things besides the glimmer papers, of course. Um, I haven't tried this yet, but this is our adhesive linen paper. Um, I, yeah, haven't tried that. It might, you know, bleed into the fibers of it because it's like a, a, um, a fabric. Kind of paper but i don't know i not i'm just in the mood to play around now with different uh different papers but i got the idea and inspiration for watercoloring on glimmer paper from my friend and the gal who assists me once a, once a week her name is teresa glow uh she's a demonstrator in our group and she was on one of our team events and um brought this all to our attention we were just like Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. And I might even grab, I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of glimmer paper, hang on, or I mean grid paper, just so that I have something to get wet without getting the rest of my surface wet. And we're gonna bring in the water painters. The water painters come in a package of three and you get this really wide one like this, which we're not using today, sorry. Pretty cool but we're not going to use it and then you get kind of a medium and then a very fine tip now i've added water to both both of these but i'm so used to just using a paintbrush as is um, that i typically don't you know squeeze and paint squeeze and paint which is what you're supposed to be doing i like to dip into a cup i don't know it's just because i've taken many art classes in the past and it's just what i'm used to but um because then you can like wash off your color too, right? Well, you can, yeah, either way you can do it. Um, so I just want to point out something though. If you're going to get these water painters, just know, because this, this was a struggle for a lot of us when we first, when these first came out. And if you're, if you're new to them, you don't open them up by cranking the way you typically think you go the opposite way. So, so that's how you open. And then you close the opposite way that you would typically think to close. All right, so yes, so I I like to take my cup, spritz a little or pour a little bit of water in there from the sink. Anyways, that's what I'm used to. So I might just revert to that, even though I'm going to try really hard to um, <laughs> to not do that. Okay, let's just play around. Let's just see what we can do here. This is not part of the card yet. It's just playing around with glimmer paper. So just like, and I'm going to grab a scrap of the watercolor paper as well. Watercolor is really, uh, the watercolor paper is really fun to play around with and so is the um, shimmery white. Those are nice sturdy papers. This is meant for watercoloring and one thing that I, I love to do myself when I'm going to watercolor is I like to get it wet. I like to spray the surface of my paper 
And then I can dip into my colors. Now I've got several colors that are sitting out here that I'm gonna play with. We're gonna use the garden green. We're gonna use the granny apple green and Coastal Cabana, Fresh Freesia, and Mango Melody will be kind of like accent extra colors. So, um, by the way, good morning to those of you that are commenting. I am one of those um, people that go live and I'm not good at reading the comments during the live, so forgive me, but um, yes. Yeah, so anyways, comment away because your comments are gonna get you entered into a prize drawing. So let's just play with, let's just play with the yellowish color. It's Mango Melody. It actually, it's kind of an orangey yellow, but when you watercolor paint with it, it becomes um, very yellowish. And this is the old technique, squeezing. You push the top and the bottom of the pad together. Then you open it up and you get this little divot of color down there. And then you can take and dip your paintbrush in there. Um, again, you can push on the sides that say, you know, push. So you push there and the water, the water starts to come down through this little reservoir here. There, it's starting to come now. But yeah, I'm so not patient enough. <laughs> come on, go down. Okay, now it's starting to come out. You can see it's getting wet there. But again, I like to just dip it into my water and then go like this. So that's how I like to pick up my my paint or ink. Um, another way that you can do it, and we'll just open up another pad here and we'll close it. You can take and pounce your color onto a clear block. Now this one, this is a little bit messier for me, which is why I typically don't go for it. But I do love this idea um, because you've got your instant color. You don't have to worry about getting your pads dirty at the top. Um, but you know, if you're not careful, you can get ink all over your fingers because you're touching the sides of the block. <laughs> and those of you that know Rachel know that I don't like to get dirty. So um, yeah, so you can take and I'm gonna keep this one for my green here. So let's just go ahead and add some. We'll just get this wet just a little bit more. And watery paper does curl, just so you know. Um, but you can see as we dab on some color, it does like to kind of move all on its own. And if we spritz it, it'll go all over the place too. It'll just kind of wash wherever it wants to. So, and you can tip it, you know, go like this. So my yellowish color here, my yellow orangish color, is moving all around on the paper. Um, it's nice to have a paper towel nearby so you can wash it off when you're done and go to a new color. So let's just dip into the, um, again, I'm so used to just regular <laughs> paint brushes. But yeah, you can squeeze it to clean it. So now let's dip into this, okay? Let's get the water going again here. There we go. So I can dip into this color now. Get a little bit more water on there. It's pretty cool that you can just tap it, or I mean squeeze it, and then um, get that pool of water there. So you see what's happening is I've just added little dabs of water, and it's kind of just going where it wants because we had the little spritzed pool there, right? And you can keep on adding water if you want to, or you can watercolor with less water if you want to, too. Where you touch these two colors together, you are gonna get a slight brownish color because they are opposite on the color wheel from each other. Yellow and purple um, are opposite on the color wheel. So I'm not gonna overlap them too much. If I had like something that was closer together, instead of opposite, you'd get a really nice blend. Um, and we don't wanna have too much brown on this, but there you go. So then to um, dry it off, or here, let's just do this too, because you can kind of do like a um, movement with the paintbrush. To dry it off, you can either set it aside and wait, or you can take your heat tool. So you got your heat tool, and there's two settings on here. The one setting is for lower uh, blasting, so you can, you can go ahead and heat this, but without pushing the water around, okay? So we'll just, I'll just show you a little bit of drying here. 
And it's, it's just going to dry in one section because we're going to set this aside and we're going to start watercoloring on the glimmer paper. Okay. Hi, Karen. How are you? It looks like uh, Joy got an answer from Tandra. <laughs> so fun to read your comments. She must have asked a question. So this is dry now. So if you want a quick dry, that's one way to do it. Okay, let's bring in the glimmer paper. So the glimmer paper, same thing, only um, I'm not going to, well, I, I'll go ahead and spritz water. I'll spit some water on this side here. Let's go ahead and dip into some colors. Oh, look, 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 look. See, same thing, only you have a glitzy, sparkly background. So, and it will dry. Hang on. Cleaning off the brush by squeezing out water like we're supposed to. There we go, now it's changing to a clearish color. And I'll pick up this and we'll dab some yellow in there. Watercoloring is so fun. It's not a very controlled kind of painting, but it's definitely fun. Okay, I'm just gonna play around here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's add a little bit more purple over here. Okay, and we're just gonna let that sit and dry too, okay? Just kind of a fun little spray. We're gonna close these up for now, and we're gonna move on to the card now that you know that you can watercolor on glimmer paper so here's another thing that you can do sorry cleaning off the brush again trying to run it till it's clear um here's another thing that you can do you can take and stamp with stays on or stamp with versamark and emboss i know right so we're gonna ink up our stamp that comes from the Splendid Thoughts stamp set. We're gonna ink that up with the Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. And we're gonna stamp it down onto our glimmer paper. And I'm just gonna hold it just to make sure that the ink is going past those little bits of glitter it's not as smooth of a surface as, you know, like um, basic white or very vanilla. Okay, now you can't see it, but it's there. I'm going to cover up my ink pad here so it doesn't dry out. Grab our gold embossing powder. So this comes from the metallic collection of embossing powders. And I'm doing it over like a little plastic Tupperware-ish kind of thing. I know it's not Tupperware. We're just going to tap off the excess. Now, the problem with this is you've got your um, bits and pieces of embossing powder stuck here and there. So you can take a couple different ideas here to take and um, brush it away with like a paintbrush kind of thing. You could use the embossing buddy, but I think it's just going to add extra powder in there since it's a more of a rougher surface so I don't think I would suggest that oh we have a part of a leaf here we didn't get um, uh, you could also use the take your pick tool which I think is a fabulous option especially for when you have it like within a little section there like that so we're gonna grab that now and we're gonna fine-tune this I'm going to get all of that excess embossing powder off. Oops. So let's grab that take your pick tool because on the end of the take your pick tool you have this little gummy um, part right there. And we're just going to go in and grab a few of these little bits and pieces. Oops, I accidentally wiped a little bit more than I should have because I'm getting old and my eyesight isn't that great close up anymore. <laughs> All right, but that's good enough. Good enough. Okay, so now we're gonna set this aside. We've got lots of setting aside things going on here, don't we? Okay, now we're gonna emboss this. So we're gonna, oh, that is bugging me. 
Hang on a minute. <laughs> Do you guys see the flaw in this? I, I mean, it's kind of bugging me. So hang on. Let's see if we can fix that without getting a ton of embossing powder issue going on here. There, that's better. <laughs> okay, filled it in. Now we want to heat it on high. So we're going to go to number two. And yes, I could be holding this with a tweezers or um, you know, put it against a piece of chipboard, like cardboard with foil on it and that kind of stuff. But I, I don't sometimes do all that stuff. <laughs> I like to stamp quick. I want to, you know, get my projects done quickly. So I just angle the heat tool away from my hand. And I keep it moving. I wiggle it back and forth. And I stop heating in a certain area once I see that it has um, turned into um, a raised and shiny surface. So we have our raised and shiny um, surface of our, of our leaf detail piece here. By the way, we may go over in time today, and I'm so sorry about that, but I really am so excited about this. I have to show you every single thing. Before we do any um, watercoloring, I thought it would be better if we um, die cut first, because if you watercolor and you put all that effort into the beautiness of that leaf um, spray, then, then you die cut and it's off, then that can really not be fun. So... <laughs> We're going to bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to zoom out a tad here because I think we're going to be super close here. Just a tad. Okay. And we're going to set it up. Platform number one. Die adapter number two. Oh, I've got my, I've got my dirty cutting mats. You guys are going to have to forgive me. I brought in my really, really scratched up ones because because they all get that way. I, I try not to use those for my lives though because it's embarrassing, but yeah, they get dirty, you guys. It's okay. So we're gonna line this up and I have to line it up facing me, so hang on a minute. We're gonna get those dies set directly over the top and we're going to use lots of um, new sticky notes because this is curly curly paper and it wants to move and we don't want it to move so you may even have to get like um, if you have a meta I'm sorry you can't see this very well um, you may even have to get like a magnetic um, cutting plate if you have one but we're hoping that this will all just kind of stay in place it's glimmer paper you guys it's not as easy to connect to with our sticky notes. Let's get that out of the way. Bring in our other cutting mat. I need like three hands here. <laughs> okay, got it. It's in there. <laughs> we'll crank it through. I don't believe it's shifted. Cross your fingers. I love this. People are saying hello to the, the people they know. So fun to read your conversations, you guys. I am near the border of New South Wales. Oh, who is? Who was that? Deborah? Oh, wow. Cool. So fun to see where everyone's from. And I love it when someone tells me that they're like just 10 minutes away from my house, too. Okay, there we go. We've die cut our leaf assortment, our branch of leaves or whatever. We're going to set this behind us. Actually, no, we're going to do one more set of die cutting. I lied. So I might as well keep that here. So these are the other dies that are in this bundle. Um, so we have that one that we just did. And then we have these detailed ones in here. We have another one that does a frame around um, that other image. So you have two images here like this. So you have a frame piece and a frame piece. You have kind of like a half circle, which is like you could use that as like a, a pot to put your plants in. This one does a frame around the bee. And again, these are just detailed pieces here. We're going to grab this one. 
and I have some odd looking scraps of garden green. Don't judge me. I don't know where I got these from, but you're going to feel like I'm wasting paper. But what I did the first time I die cut this, sorry, we're out of view again. The first time I die cut these is I did all of those detailed ones all at once on this piece and it worked. <laughs> so I wasn't wasting cardstock then. We'll crank that through. And then I think we'll have all of our die cutting done. So there's our lovely detailed leaf. Set this to the back. And let us start watercoloring this piece. Let's pull in our, where did I put it? <laughs> um, where did I put it? I had grid paper that I was using. We'll just do it on top of here. I don't know where it went. It's gone. It's gone. Here it is. Found it. Okay. So we're going to watercolor with our greens. We're going to take our granny apple green and our garden green. And because I'm old school and I don't like, I like to keep my mess from touching my fingers. I'm just going to squeeze my pads together to get the ink into the lids. And then we'll grab our, our uh, water painter here. We're using the one that I've kind of tinted green. <laughs> Actually, when you run it clear, it gets pretty darn clear. It's just staining that happens at the end of your water, your, your water painter. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and add some water to each of these. See how I did that? I just squeezed the, pen, the little water painter. And we'll get our dark color first. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And we will shift this over here so you can see better. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just drawing the water or the, the color from the base of the leaf out with the darker green. And then I'm pulling back because I want the darkest part of that green to be at the base right here. So I'm starting by going right to the tip of the base, going outward and then pulling back again. And if I do this faster, it probably will go easier. Here we go. There we go. So I'm pulling out and then I'm pulling back. You can see how the pool of the color um, tends to, I'm going to zoom in even more here, tends to be darker where it's, where you last touch it. See how I'm kind of shoving it back to the end here and it's getting darker at that spot. So, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this with all, all the leaves first. I'm just going to go in with the darker green, which is the garden green color. And then I'm going to come back and do the granny apple green. And it'll be fun to see the blend of the greens. So again, I'm going out and then back in so that where I last touch it, it's the darkest. See how that works? Pretty cool, right? This one doesn't seem as dark at the base. So I might like dab some more color on there afterwards, but right now I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna go to my light green. Um, now I'm too, clo too close, you guys. You can't even see where I'm picking up color. Um, I'm gonna go to my light green and I'm gonna start the opposite way. And I'm just gonna come right down into the other green and they're gonna blend together because there's water there, so they blend. And see how I'm pulling the light the lighter area is going to get less of a puddle because I'm going backwards into the darker green. I hope you can see that. Again, starting up here. The nice thing about having an embossed outline when you're watercoloring whether it's on regular watercolor paper, glimmer paper, um, yeah, glimmer paper or, you know, basic white, um, shimmery white, whatever paper you're using, if you're embossing first, you're going to have that outline of the embossed image as kind of like a little mini wall. It'll help to hold your watercolor within 
That's one thing that a lot of people don't like when they watercolor paint is, you know, having that that paint go beyond where they want it to go. Because again, you're dealing with a very fluid <laughs> type of paint, right? So the embossing is a great solution to that. Okay, and we are going to watercolor onto our fluid watercolor 100. Uh, it's called fluid 100 watercolor paper. We're going to um, watercolor onto that as well. And that is the kind of paper that Stampin' Up! has had um, mainly for watercoloring. Okay, I've got my green in there. I'm going to come in one more time with just a little bit of the dark green here and just kind of dab it towards the beginning part of the leaf where it connects to the stem. And you'll see the green kind of like in, in this spot here, it kind of veins out into um, the lighter color. Oh, this is so pretty up in person. You guys should see it in person. <laughs> Come on over. We're going to have a party soon. House is getting remodeled. <laughs> okay, let's set that aside and just let it dry. Okay, and then we'll take our fluid 100. It's called fluid 100 watercolor paper. And uh, let's go ahead and cut this. Now for the card that we're making, we want a piece that's three inches by four inches and a piece that's just under an inch by four inches. So the best way to do that with a six by nine piece, I'll zoom out here, six by nine piece is to cut three, three, right? They have three inch sections here, go all the way over to your four inch section, then you have two inches along here, right? So let's go ahead and cut in that direction first. So we're going to cut four inches in this direction. And then we're going to turn it and we can get three pieces that are three by four from this piece. You can see if we cut another piece there, we'd have three pieces from that nine inch length there. And then on this piece here, you could actually get four one by four inch pieces because this is eight. I'm sorry, this is nine. So four and four is eight. You could get one, two, three, four from this section. We only need four by less than one. So we're going to go an eighth of an inch less than one, which is everybody who knows math, seven eighths of an inch. So we're just going two little marks underneath the one. And the reason why I didn't do one inch is because you're going to have to do a, an odd fraction either here or with the glimmer paper strip that goes across the middle of the card in order for you to see just a hint of the base color showing through above and below the glimmer paper. So yeah, so you either had to deal with eighth inches on that one or on that one and I just picked. <laughs> okay, now we can go ahead and watercolor onto these two. And you certainly could add some watercolor onto this strip too. I didn't in my finished card. I do not have that on there. By the way, again, I could heat set this if I need to, but right now I'm just letting it air dry. Um, I'm not too worried about it drying quick enough. For this though, I am going to use some spritzing of water onto the base and I'm going to pull in my Fresh Breezia and my Mango Melody colors and again, squeezing or you can, you know, use a clear block and, and tap into it and use that as your tool instead. Squeezing, open it up. Okay, now I've got my two colors sitting right next to me. I believe, see now they're, they're clean. I don't know which color went with which. <laughs> I think I'll use this bigger one though. And we'll use this with, let's get the water running here. We'll use that with our Mango Melody. I'm going to spritz it a little bit more and dip it in. Yeah, my painter is not getting the water out of this one as easily. There it is. Okay. Oh, did you see that? You guys, so I touched it and it went, it was so cool. <laughs> so I'm just adding 
some yellowish orangish color here and there and a little bit down here as if they were connected at first but then they got disconnected that is a nice bright yellow. I think I like that, but you can, again, you can spritz it to water it down more to get it lighter. You can, um, oops, my comments aren't flowing here. I stopped them. <laughs> you can take and, you know, get them darker too. You can dip into less water. Okay, now let's move over to, let's clean this off first. And you can clean it off in your cup or squeezing your water painter. It's coming. There we go. Now it's running clear. And we're going to dip into our purple color, which is the Fresh Freesia. And I'm just going to kind of come in here. And again, these are opposite on the color wheel. So don't overlap these two. It's not going to look pretty. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Um, I'm going to add a little bit up here. Maybe a little down here. I need to squeeze again. I'm running out of my Fresh Freesia ink. Ooh, too dark. I didn't like that, so watch. There, now it kind of has a little bit more maneuverability. <laughs> it's so relaxing, you guys. And not, you know, these aren't gonna turn out the same. None of them are. They're gonna all be different. That's one of the beauties of watercoloring too. Okay, I think I've got enough color going throughout there. I don't know why I sprayed it again. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I'm gonna dab it a little bit just to get a little bit darker. Okay, now isn't it fun to watch someone create? Oh, on the other card, by the way, I use Coastal Cabana and Mango Melody. Okay, now we can either set this aside. Oh, you can see it's pooling over here. You can either set it aside to dry or we can use the heat tool again. Put it on the one setting. Oh, did I just... <laughs> did I just tap onto Jennifer's comment? Oh my gosh, you guys. How am I going to get that off of there now <laughs> here we'll do this i'll tap on someone else's comment sorry jennifer how are you by the way it's good to see your name pop up okay now i've highlighted linda's it is relaxing now i have to go back to hers and tap off of it and i think it will go away after a minute <laughs> i think i think i don't know i'm so bad at this you guys this technology is like fighting me right now it's still there. <laughs> All right, we're just going to highlight people's comments throughout. Rita's laughing at me. Um, I can't highlight her comment, though. It is relaxing. Oh, my gosh, you guys. What is going on here with the comments? <laughs> now I can't even highlight anyone's comments. They're all, they're all stuck. Oh, Linda, yours is just going to have to be up there forever because I don't know how to get it off. That's so crazy, guys. <laughs> oh, see, I told you something was going to go wrong. <laughs> Help, someone who knows Switcher. Do I tap on this? It is a struggle, Anne. <laughs> I'm going to highlight your, no, it's not even highlighting your comment. Oh, there. Oh, oh, wait. I think I got it now. I did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, you guys. <sighs> Hot flash. Okay. Back to heating. <laughs> I'm looking at the clock now with a very flushed face because I'm having a hot flash. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so it's going to dry on its own too, but you can see that this is already like touchable. I'm just going to set this aside. <laughs> oh, what a week it's been. It's been crazy. Now, we're going to do the step that I normally share with you at the beginning, and that's cutting your base cardstock. But by now, a lot of you who are still tuned in with me, I'm probably like, 
Gosh, Rachel, we know how to do that. Skip it. Okay, eight and a half by 11. Cut it in half this way at four and a quarter inches. Turn it 90 degrees. Now we're gonna score it at five and a half inches, which is half of 11. <laughs> I'm gonna take a nap after this. <laughs> okay, we're gonna grab our bone folder, give it a good crease. And we're going to grab this paper now. Now this paper, can you see this? It has a little bit of, oh, I'm gonna zoom in because you can't see that far away, Rachel. Okay, it has a little bit of shimmer to it. Um, and you really, it's really hard to see. Like it's harder to see than Wink of Stella shimmer. Um, but when you're shining it in the sunlight, um, when you got the right angle, you can see it. You guys probably can't see it. This is called our shimmery white. And if you compare our shimmery white to our basic white, excuse me, and very vanilla, you can see that our watercolor paper is actually closest to the shimmery white in tone. This is compared to very vanilla. This is compared to basic white which you know is a little bit closer, but when you see them in person, totally these two pair up really well. So the shimmery white is what I chose, and we're gonna add that to the inside. Let's stamp it first. Always stamp beforehand, and where did my stamps go? Here they are. Okay, so we've got today is a day to remember. We're gonna stamp that on the inside of our card using our garden green ink. And because my stamps are a little off, I'm gonna stamp on my grid paper first, just to make sure that my, good. Okay, this one's lined up. But you also have a flip side to your paper. So when you are stamping, if you accidentally get it, you know, angled funny, or you get a blotch in your B, because that one's kind of, you can just turn it over. Let's just do it again, okay? You have two sides if you don't mount it beforehand. Okay, there we go, I like that one better. So we're gonna take our adhesive, our seal adhesive, just add a little bit on the back, add this to the inside of the card. I've got a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of shimmery white on here, so we've got this eighth inch border all the way around. Um, then we're, we've got another piece, here it is. This one here we need to create um, a little banner with. And we have this Banners Pick-A-Punch that has two different options, and actually multiple options if you look at the dotted lines on there. You can see that you can have an inch wide strip go in there, but you could also put a three quarter inch strip, a half inch strip, and any size really below an inch. Okay, you just push it, uh, first you open it up, you have to unlock it, and you push it all the way till it stops, which is right there, okay? I've got a three and a quarter by one inch piece of granny apple green in here, and I'm going to push down, and that has punched the end to look like that. If I had a skinnier strip, you can imagine the difference, differences you would get here, but you'd still have banners or points, arrows, whatever you wanna call it, no matter what size we do on that particular one. We have other um, pick-a-punches, but that's the banners pick-a-punch. Now let's take the other sentiment, sentiment that we have that says, let's celebrate. This is gonna go on the outside of the card, so I'm inking it up and I'm gonna test it just because that's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to stamp it down like that. And we do have two sides to this as well, so if we mess up, we can flip it over. Stamping before sticking. <laughs> okay, let's set that ink aside. We're done with all of our inks. We've got our die cut piece. We've got our watercolor piece, which is dry now. Um, these are fairly dry too, but I'm gonna just kind of shoot some heat at them just to make sure that we don't have any moisture in them because we don't want the rest of our card getting moist. Oops, go on one. So I'm just gonna heat that for a second. And before you connect your glimmery strip, 
you want to make sure that you um, add your leaf pieces to it. So we're going to kind of do some tricky maneuvering. Do you see how this is curling, by the way? We're going to use our bone folder and give it a little bit of a flattening out with that tool. This one's not too bad. We just suck the moisture out of it. Yeah, those don't feel wet at all. So let's grab our bone folder just to kind of make those corners kind of go back to normal here. But another step that you should take is, especially with a watercolor piece, is just to take and go all the way around the edges, completely up to the edges um, with your adhesive. You may even want to use like a stronger adhesive than this because it's pretty stiff paper, but I'm going to I'm going to use our seal. We have a seal plus we have tear and tape adhesive. Any of those will work. And this is actually I mean, it's holding together pretty well on my other cards. Right. So uh, so seal will probably work, too. OK, then we're going to do this one. Put it along both edges here. And put that along the bottom. Like so. And we've got an eighth of an inch on the top and the sides and the bottom here, leaving us the ability to expose just a slight amount of green there. Okay, that's why I wanted to cut these smaller. Now, for this piece, we're going to adhere this and we kind of want, I, I gave you an extra length here, like I said, three and a quarter inches, but you could totally, I think I said three and a quarter, but you could totally go, oh, three and a half. You could go longer, you could go shorter, depending on, you know, what your sentiment is that you're going to be using. Um, you could, yeah, definitely go shorter if you need to. But I'm going to connect this piece first, like that. Okay, in order to do that, I want to make sure I have plenty of adhesive back here. It's going to be adhering to our glimmer paper. So we want to have a good amount of adhesive on the back side of that. We're going to tuck. And then we're going to check to make sure it'll look good. Okay, that looks like it'll work. We're probably going to cut off about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch there. So I'm going to let that stick against there. And then I'm going to lay this down. I'm not going to adhere it yet. It looks like it's kind of longer than my watercolor. Hang on a minute. It's slightly longer. When you're cutting glimmer paper, um, yes, it is longer. <laughs> Oops. Um, we're going to cut off about a 16th of an inch here. Um, but when you're cutting glimmer paper, it's going to save on your blades to cut it upside down so that you're not pushing the most of your blade against the actual um, rough surface. OK, now let's lay that down again. Let's add this where it should go. Oops, it moved on me. Don't move on me. There, right about there. Now I'm going to stick it onto my glimmer paper. Okay, the next step is to add this to the back. So we're going to put lots of adhesive on here. You don't have to slather the whole thing though because it wasn't watercolored. And this, if we tuck it to the right, we don't have to worry about lining it up with the card when we do so. I'm just going to tuck it off to the right and stick it there. And I'm going to pull a little leaf over the top here so it kind of drapes down. See that? And one more thing we want to do before we add this is grab our paper snips and trim. By the way, I'm grabbing all of my handy daddy tools out of this adhesive holder, this awesome adhesive holder from the Country Hive. I've shared this before. It is awesome, you guys. I just love it. Look, 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 look. So cool. <laughs> I got to get a link to um, that in my description of my video. Um, but you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and you can click on shop and go to my favorite things and you can see lots of goodies there including my favorite things from the Country Hive, from Stampin' Storage, from Amazon. Okay, there we go. Last but not least is to embellish. 
So we're going to grab the take your pick tool. We're going to squeeze that little gummy end. And oh, I want to show you this. I did this with black first, but I thought it was kind of harsh. But I'm going to use that somewhere. OK. I don't know where. <laughs> so I'm going to bring in some embellishments. And because we have gold, oh yeah, we have to do something else too. Because we have gold on the outline of the embossing, we could use our brushed brass butterflies. We could use this fun new embellishment, which is called festive. Oh no, it's called red and green. No, I think they're called festive pearls. They, yeah, their name on the packaging was not the same as what it is in the catalog. I believe they're called fest, yes, festive pearls. And they have this reddish color, this bluish color, silver and gold on there. And I am going to go with those, but before we do it, I'm going to bring back in this adhesive holder because look at this. My glue dots sit right in here and I can just pull and take a glue dot off like that and stick it underneath a leaf. Oops. <laughs> it wants to stick to my hands even more. Here we go. Oh, there's another leaf. Let's put it back there. And now we can tack that down so that it doesn't fly up on us. There. Okay, let's grab our festive pearls. And we'll stick one next to the L. And then we'll stick one up high over here. And then we'll put one over to the right. There, there's our finished card. Yay. See, they don't turn out exactly the same. That's OK. <laughs> um, Sh uh, Shaylee asked, maybe it's been shared previously, but do you store all of your dyes on a magnetic page or only when you're working with them? I, I actually use them to store them that way. Um, and those are from Stampin' Storage, the magnetic sheets. Um, you'll find that in my favorite section also. Here is the other one. This one has the butterflies on it um, instead of the festive dots. I put my banner off to the right and I use the banner side instead of the arrow side of that punch. This one had a couple more of the green detailed dyes on it. Same watercoloring tips where you start with the dark green and pull the color to the beginning of the leaf to get it to be darkest there. And then you go in with the light green, pulling from the top of the leaf down into the dark color. Um, the inside of this one has a stamp image that isn't necessarily by itself in the set, so I masked it. And that's why I mentioned having like tape or something. Um, if you mask your stamp, then ink it up, and then stamp with it. Have you done that? Have you guys done that? So you take and mask it. You can use any kind of tape. You could use washi tape. You could use masking tape. <laughs> but you mask it like that. You ink it, you have ink on your tape, you peel that tape away though, and the only thing that's inked up is that portion of the stamp, and that's how I got that. Because I thought that this stamp set really was fitting for making sympathy cards too. Sending hugs, much love. So this now turns into a sympathy card by removing this part of the stamp. Um. Did I have anything else? I think I covered it, you guys. <laughs> Lots of stuff today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, so we covered watercoloring on the watercolor 100, the fluid 100 watercolor paper and on glimmer paper. Try it out. Super fun. Um, there's a couple different packs of glimmer papers in the current mini catalog, but even if you have like a neutral color, uh, a neutral light color, I should say, at home, try it out on that too. Also, different brands of glimmer paper or glitter paper might be different, so it might not take as well. We just know that the Stampin' Up! stuff does because that's all I use. Um, but experiment. You know, don't be afraid to try it out. Just take little pieces. And then, you know, when you do experiment and you come up with something that you don't necessarily want to use on your card, set it aside. You might get inspired by that piece later on. Like if I had this against black cardstock, it might really just be super striking. So um, I'm going to keep it. I'm not throwing it away, even though I didn't want to use it on this card. What else do I want to tell you? Celebration is going on. Um, you have a little over a month left, so this will continue on into August. 
So if you do decide to purchase, if you want to shop for any products, you can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com and click on the shop button. If you are a demonstrator, shop from yourself. If you have another demonstrator, shop from them. I just love sharing and I want you to enjoy your Stampin' Up! products in this brochure or even online. When you go online at stampinup.com and you shop um, via the online store, you'll be able to see um, this in the specials section, um, celebration choices that you get to pick. These are free picks with um, 50 or $100 orders. And then that pomegranate one that you just saw at the end there, that one's free with a $300 order, but it's called a host set. So you wouldn't necessarily have to order 300 yourself. You can just gather a bunch of friends. You can get together, call your demonstrator and say, hey, we want to place our orders all together to ship to me. And then, you know, I'll ship them all to one person or your demonstrator will. And you could earn that set just by having a bunch of orders placed together. I'm going to let you go. Oh, next week. Oh, the adhesive holder. I saw that question, Kathy. That is from The Country Hive. And by the way, those of you watching on Facebook, I will... Um, I will uh, uh, copy and paste the information that's in the description of the, um, I got to do prizes too. <laughs> I'm going to copy and paste the information from the YouTube description into the Facebook description so that you have all that information that the YouTube people have right now. Um, again, this blog post will go live in about 15 minutes, so you'll be able to access the PDF at that time. Um, let us clear our table because we also want to bring in the prizes from last week. Okay, because we have some choices left from last week here. Um, but yeah, the Country Hive, and I will put that link into the description of my video. Um, my friend Ashley, her husband James, own that business, and they've got some awesome, um, awesome organizational pieces that you'll want to look at. So you'll want to shop their stuff. Okay, we have a couple options left for prizes that we had from the last week's winners. So we do two live winners and then we do two after live winners. The two after live are pulled from the after live comments from YouTube and from Facebook. The live are pulled from YouTube. Now we got to get more viewers on Facebook or more comments, I should say, or whatever, but we got to get more commenting going on there before we start drawing live prizes from Facebook. So um, if you're joining from Facebook, click share. Get your friends to watch. It's usually every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time, although I have to tell you with this remodel and summer, and in Minnesota, summer is precious, so we do our vacationing, but um, there's been a lot of, uh, not a lot, I think three or four weeks already this summer, three, three where I haven't been live on a Wednesday, but then I share like a pre-recorded video. So um, you'll still be able to visit my blog, or I'm sorry, my YouTube channel or my um, Facebook at 11 a.m. on Wednesdays and either see a live most of the time or you'll see a pre-recorded, but um, fun stuff. So let me announce who the um, winners are from last week's, let's see here. I'm going to go to my YouTube winner, click on that. All right, so from last week's comments, the ones that went all the way from after the live to up to t this morning, um, all of your names were put in. And Sandy Bauman, you were the winner for the prize drawing for the after live from YouTube. So you get to pick from those prizes that I just shared, and I will show them again in just a second. And then we have Facebook winner... Vicki Eakins. So congratulations to Vicki and to um, Sandy. Uh, congrats to both of you. Make sure that you reach out to me at my email address, which is stampyourartout at comcast.net so that you can claim your prize. The first person who reaches out to me at my email address, don't comment here because I'm not going to see it as quickly. It's usually like sometimes up to a week, maybe even a couple of weeks with this remodel, but um, reach out to me with my email address and I will be able to respond to you right away. Uh, so let's look at those prizes one more time. You get to pick from these uh, two collections here we have, or a collection. One's not a collection. This is a mouse pad that is unique and Stampin' Up! demonstrators can get it, but people who are not Stampin' Up! demonstrators cannot and it's really pretty and so you might as well get it if you're not a demonstrator because it's really cool. And then 
<laughs> this is something, um, a combo gift here. We've got a Wink of Stella and the glue bottle with the fine tip that I use in a lot of my videos. Didn't use it today, but um, those are options for your prizes. Now I'm going to tell you what the prizes are for the live winners. And Trisha's going to get ready to announce those winners. I'm bringing up a basket. So I have this basket in front of me and it's got lots of goodies in it. I'm just going to put it right in front of the camera here. So this is my basket that I pull out when people come to my house to pick up catalogs, orders, um, that sort of thing. And so there's paper packs in here, there's ink spots, there's stamps. Um, gosh, there's a roll of ribbon in here. <laughs> there's some leftover embellishments, things like that. So just lots of fun goodies. And it's going to be a surprise prize. So for the live winners this week and for the two that I choose next week, you're just going to get a bunch of goodies mailed to you. If you do not live in the U.S. and I can't mail, I can't sell you product, I can't mail you product then either, but we can always do a tutorial. You can get a tutorial sent to you via email and that option is for everybody. So if you would rather get um, a $15 value tutorial, uh, you could do that as your price choice. So let us peek back. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to peek back at the comments and Trisha Josephs has announced our winners. We have Cher Dugan and you know what I'm gonna do this because this is kind of cool now that I know how to do it. Hang on I know it's I'm gonna find her comment really quick. There it is. Watch. Did I oops there we go. Oh it doesn't show the whole thing. <laughs> oh it does. Well it shows their names. So Cher Dugan and Carol Schaefer. <laughs> I know how to do this now. Okay, I'm going to click away from that. That was cool. <laughs> Anyways, you two are the winners. So email me um, at stampyourartout at comcast.net. Email me your, uh, your address um, so that I can get to you your prizes. Okay. All right. So fun to see so many of your names pop up. I see Cindy. I see my cousin Kelly on here with me. I see Pat. You guys, this is fun. I feel like it's romper room though, so I'll be quiet. Okay, next week. Next week is August 3rd, right? Look at my notes here. Yes, August 3rd is next week. And I can't be live, which is why I spent so much time talking about that. Um, I can't be live. Hey, Nancy. Um, so we are going to have a pre-recorded, but it's, it's connected to the all-star blog hop. So, you know, it's going to be something pretty cool. Well, hopefully you like all the projects I share, but this is a fun one. This idea came to me because my friend and fellow demonstrator in our group, Rose Carey, sent me a really cool card. And, um, so I took that same fold and I did that card from using the, he's the man suite. So I pointed back there because that's where my supplies are. <laughs> but um, yes, so we're going to have a pre-recorded fun fold card for you next week using the He's the Man suite. It'll be connected to the blog hop with the all-star group, which is global. You'll get to see lots of different ideas using that suite. And you can always apply those ideas to products you own if you're not interested in the He's the Man suite or you don't own it or whatever. But that's what I did because she did it with Halloween stuff and I did it with a totally different set of products. It works. Um, and then the week after, I will be live on August 10th and I feel like I've already got a plan for that one. Let me just peek at my calendar here. Um, no, I guess I didn't finalize anything yet. <laughs> but hopefully you'll enjoy it. Oh my gosh, that would have been your last live, Linda, before going back to Costa Rica. I'm sorry. You can still watch from Costa Rica, though, right? <laughs> so anyway, safe travels to you and to anybody and healthy wishes to all of you, um, uh, especially if you're not feeling well lately. Just um, take care. Thank, big thank you to Trisha Josephs and Lisa Marshall, my moderators. Love you guys. Um, and that's it. So I won't see you next week, but thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in two weeks. 
and take care everyone everyone i'd like you all now to go and stamp your art out bye bye